It is possible to convert between strings and arrays using PHP. We use the implode and explode functions to do this. Imploding implodes an array to a string and exploding explodes a string into an array. Let's say that we have an array and we want to put its contents into a string. We can use implode to do that. I'll create an array that contains some colors and then we'll use printr to print the value of our array. So obviously you can see that my array contains four items and each item is being indexed to its numeric equivalent. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to implode the array and break this apart into a string. I'll make a new variable called new string. I'm going to use the implode function and I'm going to pass in the name of the array. So in this case, we're going to use the colors array. Now that this is a string, I can just use echo or print to print out the value of my new string variable. If we save this and we look at the page in the browser, you can see that it's being printed out. Now currently, all of the values are going to be printed with no spaces in between the items. What we want to do is add a separator string to the implode function. If I come to the implode function and I'm going to pass on a comma with a space associated with it, and then because I'm passing on more than one parameter, I would need to separate the parameters by a comma as well. If we save now and we refresh, you can see that it's going to print out the value of my new string and each of the items are going to be separated by a comma. Now the reason that they're on different lines is because we haven't added any HTML code to have these print on another line. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll wrap the echo statement inside of opening and closing paragraph tags. Now you can see that the, the new value of the array gets passed on as a string. When you use the implode function, you have the option of using a separator, whatever sort you would want, and then you're going to pass on the name of the array, which will become a string. The separator is going to refer to whatever character to define where one value ends and another begins. Commonly, this would be a comma, a blank space, or perhaps a tab. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a string and we're going to turn it into an array. So we'll create the variable called my string, and then we're just going to make it equal to this is a basic string of text and I will print the value of my string to the page. If I save my page and we refresh in the browser, you can see here's the string of text. Let's use the explode function to see what this does to our text. So what we'll do to convert the string into an array is we're going to define a new name for our array. I'm going to make this equal to explode and then in parentheses I can pass on the value of the string that I want to explode. Now unlike implode, explode does expect that you have two parameters. You need to have the separator and the string. So in this case, our separator is going to be whatever separates these values. So for us, that's going to be a space. Then we'll go ahead and we'll pass on the name of the variable that we want to convert into an array. Now, because this is now an array, I would have to use print R instead of print to be able to display this. So if we save our page, and we look inside of the browser, you can now see that I have a new text array. Let's wrap our my string inside of a paragraph so we have a little bit of spacing on the page. It'll make it easier for us to see this information. So you can see here's my new array. It is going to index each of the elements that is part of my string, and it's looking for the separator of a space and it's going to assign the numeric indexes to each of these, and these now become a value of the array. Some reasons why you might want to use these functions is you may want to turn an array into a string in order to pass that value appended to a URL. You can't easily do this with an array, but you can with a string. You might also want to turn an array into a string in order to store that information inside of a database. Or you might want to turn a string into an array to convert a comma delimited text field, like a keyword search area of a form, into separate parts. 
We're going to build out one more example that uses implode and explode, and we're going to actually collect some information from our users. I'm going to create a new file. We'll put a message on our page to give our user instructions of what we want them to do. And then what we're going to do is we're going to incorporate a form field into our page. So I'll use a form tag. My action is going to point to a PHP file. And for a method, let's use post. I'm going to make a text input field. I'll assign an ID of words along with a name of words. And we'll make a submit button as well. If we look at our page in the browser, our page is going to look like this. Now I need to set up my solveit.php page so that we can actually use PHP to resolve this. So I'm going to make a new page and I'll just quickly set this up. So in order to have PHP solve this problem and alphatize the results, we're going to need to take the results that the user enters into the form field, and we're going to need to turn that into an array so that we can use the sort function to sort it. And then we're going to have to take the results that we want to print and turn them back into a string. So we'll be using several of the functions that we've been talking about in this section of our course. I'm going to begin by creating my word array. I'm going to make this equal to explode, and then in parentheses, I'm going to pass in that the separator is going to be a space. I'm going to use a comma, and then what it is that I want to collect is going to use my underscore post, and inside of the square braces, the thing that I want to collect is words. This line of code right here is going to create the new word array out of our string post words. Each space between the words in the post words is going to indicate that the next word should be a new array element. So the first word that we would enter would become word array zero, and the second word would be word array one, and so on and so forth. The next step is that we will sort the array. To sort the array, I'm simply going to use the sort function and I'm going to pass in my new word array. We're going to use sort to sort our array alphabetically. Because we don't need to maintain the key value association in the words array, we can use sort instead of a sort. Then we're going to turn the array back into a string. And to do that, I'm going to make a new variable and I'll just call it string words. I'm going to make it equal to and I'll use my implode function. And for my separator, I'm going to pass in a br tag. So each of the words will be on its own line. And then I'm going to pass in a comma and we're going to tell what we want to turn into the string. And in this case, that's going to be our word array. And then the final step is to print the results to the page. And now that I'm dealing with a string, I can just simply use my print function and I'll print a paragraph. We'll use our br tag and then we're going to pass in the value of string words and then I'll simply close my paragraph tag. If I save this and we go ahead and look at the page that collects the information, I'll go ahead and I'll enter in the terms. And remember that we are asking that our terms be separated by a space. Once I've entered in the words, I'm going to click my alphabetize this button and you can see that it's going to give me an alphabetized version of my entry. So it's going to show me each of the terms as a string and they're all going to be in alphabetical order. So now you can see how we can use a combination of some of the functions that we've discussed in this section of the course together to make a more useful application.